Hi everyone. Welcome to The Sip and Spin. I am the Tipsy Spinster. Thank you so much for joining me on the first day of this year's Tour de Flea. Today is also a little bit of a celebration for me because it marks one year of doing the shows on this channel. In my glass is a beautiful strawberry rhubarb wine from one of our local wineries. And as you can see, I did put sugar around the rim because I realized that oftentimes with the fruit wines that you get at the smaller wineries, adding that little bit of sugar brings out some of the flavors. And in this case, sipping this reminds me of one of my favorite pies, strawberry rhubarb. So on today's show, I'm going to talk about three different breeds for the Shave em to Save em project. All three breeds are still in the threatened category, which is the largest category. But the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the Tour de Flea. This year's tour runs from July 6th to July 28th, and I would encourage you to find a group either on Ravelry or on Facebook and join in the spinning fun. Unlike Spinzilla, the Tour de Flea is all about challenging yourself to spin every day. So the idea is you want to spin every day the bikers are racing during the Tour de France. There are a couple rest days built in and depending upon the group that you join, there'll probably be some additional challenges and the opportunity to win some prizes. One of the reasons why I jumped in and joined this year's tour is because with the breeds that I'm showcasing today, I realized that I could actually set up some beautiful challenges for myself and hopefully I'll be able to film them and show them to you as I move through them. The first breed that I want to talk about today is Caracal. Caracal actually means Black Lake. It comes from the Turkmenistan, the Afghanistan region in Central Asia. It was brought to the United States in Eh, we're thinking maybe about the 1800s, found its way over here. Here's the neat thing with Caracal. Originally, these sheep were designed as meat and for carpet. So it is going to be a little bit coarser wool. Here's the cool thing with these. When you look at the roving, you'll realize a little bit like Navajo churro, it's got a coarser texture. There are chem fibers. Here's the thing that's neat about it they also have a lock structure so the locks that i'm going to be showcasing today came from woodsong farms and paul as you can see makes lovely locks so let's take a look at what we have here so when we're working with caracal and i left these intact i haven't started washing them yet because of what i want to do with them when you look at the locks you realize they're incredibly long and the white fibers, it's really easy to see on this particular one. Here are the Kemp fibers and these are going to be what creates that little bit of coarseness and that's kind of what differentiates the Caracal breed from some of the softer breeds is you've got some of that scratchy fiber, but I have to say, feeling this, oh my gosh, it is incredibly soft. So there's one lock, but as we move through, here's what's so interesting about sheep. This one, I, I wish I had like touch-o-vision because this lock is completely different from the Ram Paul. This particular one is incredibly coarse. And I don't know, it, it's probably gonna be hard to see, but you can see how, well, I guess you can. This one is finer, and this one has a little bit coarser or thicker texture to it. It's a little softer down at the bottom. And then as we move through, as you can see, Caracal comes in lots of different colors. This one is even, even more different. So we have this one that's long and soft, and this one that's long and coarse. And then when we get to the brown one, we have soft and curly. So this right here, this is completely atypical of what I would think of when I think of Caracal. This is so incredibly soft. It reminds me a little bit of the roving. This is definitely going to get spun into yarn 
whereas these two, I'm going to try something a little bit different with. And then finally, we have this color, which is kind of an interesting combination of the dark on the top and then the light on the bottom. And this is kind of in between these two. So you have all of these different like textures. And that's one of the things that I, again, I keep saying it, I absolutely love working with farms because you really get to know all of their different breeds and sheep. And you really, really get an idea of the variety that you can get just within one breed. And it makes me realize when I started playing with some of these fibers, again, the Livestock Conservancy, the, the, the idea is to bring these threatened breeds back into good standing and develop them for a variety of different uses. So because Caracal was traditionally meat and carpet based, it, it was okay to have the coarser fibers. But then you have some of this really soft as well. And it's like, well, wait a second. That we could do more if we continue breeding um, within and working on the purity of the standards. So that's Caracal, which again means Black Lake. It originally comes from Central Asia. It is on the threatened list. Now let's move over to England and we're going to talk a little bit about Cotswold and Lincoln. Cotswold and Lincoln are both considered English long wool breeds. Oh, one more thing about the Caracal just because it's funny. They're considered a fat rump sheep and they have a fat tail. They're, look them up on line. They're a unique looking animal and they do kind of have a fat butt with a little fat bulbous tail. It's a unique looking breed. So I just wanted to throw that in. All right, let's take a look at the English long wolves. And this fiber is so similar. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to do them both together. I have a lot of it. These fibers are very similar, and I'm going to do some exciting things with them during the Tour de Fleece. So let's take a look at Cotswold. Cotswold both comes from Nystock Farms, and the beautiful, light, fluffy roving that I have is from a ewe aptly named Snow Baby, which is near and dear to my heart because when I had sheep growing up, my lamb was named Snowbell because she had a little white bell on her forehead and she was as white as snow. So kind of loving this fiber, a little emotional. And then if you'll notice, we also have locks. So I've got locks from Paige and Hattie who were kind enough to share. And this is what makes Cotswold a long wool breed. Take a look at these beautiful locks. Long wool breeds are often the types of breeds that you'll see used in doll hair manufacture because it, it is high lanolin and it's got a nice crimp to it. It's got nice curl. It's very strong. It is not, I, ooh, I'm on the fence. I would not call this next to skin soft by all means you can comment in and go oh my gosh it's absolutely next to skin soft to me this feels a little coarse so i've got some things planned for the long wool i might try to do a little dyeing but i don't know i'm not a big fan of working with dyes because i don't like mess um again you can see Oh, the shine on this. Here's the benefit of spinning this. It almost has the shine similar to mohair. Oh, there we go. In the sun. Not a lot of that is the lanolin, but oh my gosh. Oh, you can see the lanolin on my fingers. This is not something I would want to spin in the raw. So I have some ideas for this batch. You'll have to check back in to see what I do with it. And then finally, I want to talk a little bit about Lincoln. And again, here is the Lincoln Roving. This came from Blue Moon Alpacas, which is a wonderful 
place to get commercially prepared fiber. And here's the thing with, yeah, I'm sniffing it, and I am for a reason. So Blue Moon Alpacas, it's a relatively big company, but the way that they scour their wool, it retains a lot of the natural smells and feels. There's still just a little bit of lanolin left in here. And that's what I look for in mills that process fiber for me or even mills that do commercial processing. And the reason for that is this. I have worked with wool that has been scoured to within an inch of its life, and even the best wool, if it's over scoured, can become coarse, and it loses some of its character. You know me, I want to be able to smell where the animal came from. I want to be able to smell the fields, and again, this smells like a summer day, and that's what I'm hoping for when I get fiber. Now, the locks came from Curly Goose Cottage, and Anna is who provided these locks. And so you can see, again, this is Lincoln. This is a Lincoln long wool. Has some variation, which is a little bit different than the Cotswold. Sort of a nice comparison between the two. As you can see, they are aptly named long wool. I mean, they're, it's called long wool for a reason. But here's what's interesting. You can see the crimp is a little bit different. You have wider. It's separated out a little bit more. The Cotswold has a tighter crimp. So those are sort of some of the differences. This has a longer lock down at the end, whereas the Cotswold doesn't. It's a little bit curlier. Pull it apart a little bit more. Again, both would work for doll hair. I imagine both will take dye fairly well too. So there's Cotswold and Lincoln. This is Lincoln. So there are three more breeds on the Shave 'em to Save 'em list from the Livestock Conservancy. All three of these breeds are on the threatened. And again, what that means is in order to be in the Livestock Conservancy Shave 'em to Save 'em, it's the number of animals that are registered each year. So the idea is to get more farmers to register and to make it known what they're producing and um, how they're producing and keeping the line pure and moving forward. The Caracal, I think, is probably one of the most interesting because of the degree of variety that you see in the different animals and the wool texture um, from coarse to very soft. So I encourage you, I ask you, please stay tuned as I move through this year's Tour de Fleece. Please check out my Instagram and Facebook page. Chances are I'll be doing some live stuff there with some of the blending and some of the spinning that I'm doing. I'm going to stick to the shave them to save them on this channel, and I'll try to do a little bit more with the Tour de Fleece on Instagram and Facebook. So if you would like, join in with me on this year's Tour de Fleece. If you've not had a chance to check out the Livestock Conservancy Shave to Save Them, please do so. As always, Thank you so much for tuning in. Happy spinning.